Welcome to the Ashraf Garda Show. So a uh, couple of weeks back, I was driving um, on Glenhove Road in, in uh, Rosebank in Johannesburg uh, and passed the offices of, uh, of Cricket South Africa and then also passed the, the office of a rather smart, fancy-looking building. And, and uh, uh, my, my son looked at it and, and I said, well, that's, that's an agency called Avatar. And his question was like, who are these guys? So I thought, well, maybe that's, that's an interesting entry into what we're talking about now. So we have the two guys that, in fact, are Avatar, uh, Velen Gobani and uh, Zibuziso Mkwanazi. So, so welcome, welcome Avatar, welcome the team, and, and let's talk about Avatar. Hello, thank you for having us. Thanks. Thank Thanks. you, and, and it's interesting, after I, I mentioned to my son about Avatar, the next thing I, I see, um, I mean, lots of things happening with your agency, acquisitions, uh, uh, pitches being won, but the more important one was the tweet, in fact, from Yuzibu about... Um, where it all started in a, in a lounge in, in Katli Hong. Now, it just sounds ridiculous okay. because most people think about a serious business always starting well planned, well thought out, uh, and, and uh, we would start in a, in a fancy office, but that's not the reality, right? So I thought, let, let's have a chat. See, well, I'll start no. with you first. So since the meeting was at your place, right, take us through that day. When did it happen? What, what was the discussion about? All right, all right, uh, I can do that. Um, so, so the oh, shoe. So before it was even called Avatar, you know, the business was called other things, you know. Um, but the the dream to start to stay interesting fact, it actually started as a computer repair business, right? Uh, because in in my high school days, I I had a passion for anything to do with technology. Right. And well, the easiest entry was a computer repair business. And then it was called Sisonke, you know, um, and this was when I was 17 years old. And, and that's when the dream started. And, you know, running that particular computer repair business, I quickly realized that, you know, I've got very big dreams and repairing computers is going to take very long for me to explore those dreams. And and the business diversified into web development, uh, and and that's how, you know, getting into almost the closer field to marketing. So so it went, but you know when it started, you know there was no capital, nothing. And I asked my mom for two thousand rand. She gave me two thousand rand, you know, to and to start the stream. Yeah, and and that's how it started. That was the beginning of it. And it ran from my bedroom, you know, for for a few months, you know, while I was in high school. It ran from my bedroom while I was starting, you know. It went to my flat in Bramfontein, you know, still still building sites, you know, for small businesses and and agencies then because agencies didn't know how to build websites, so I would build websites on behalf of agencies. And uh, that exposed us to big brands for the first time. So I take it, Zibo, at this point in time, from uh, computer repair to then web design, you're, you're on your own, right? Um, so, so between computer repair and web design, so there's a, there's a guy I used to hang out with, and we, we shared uh, mutual interests, you know. And uh, interestingly enough, we were introduced, you know, to we were introduced together by what who is today my sister-in-law. You know, she wasn't then, you know, and she just like put two and two together and kind of went, "You guys should be." I had this, you know, for everything technology, and I would find a way to monetize it because I had very big dreams, you know, and. Uh, and he he liked business, he liked accounting, and we thought, well, if we come together and we put this thing together, um, and then let's build something out of it, you know. But what was very interesting in the way that we started, so after I got the 2,000 rands from my mom, you know, there's not much you can do with 2,000 rand as a teenager, except uh, think, uh, you know, well, there's, there's not much you can do in essence. And um, what we did with that money is that I actually put that money into the stock exchange, right? So I took the biggest 
And I did the one thing that uh, investors should never do and put your eggs in one basket, you know, and that's exactly what I did. And uh, it was a lucky shot. Hey, I came out with over 10 grand out of that one transaction, you know, that gave me enough money to get my first decent formal clothes, you know, so I could actually attend meetings, you know, so that I could actually attend, you know, like meetings, I have money for taxi, you know, to go to meetings, you know, so that's how it all started. And, um, you know, to get work done, so what I did is I went, which is now UJ, and I then kind of went, guys, give me your portfolios, right? All, all the work you're working on. Because, you know, students work on all, all sorts of brands, but as, as projects, the potential for what we could do for potential clients. So I almost played the middleman, potential clients, sold those portfolios as capability and they bought into them. That's how the agencies bought into them. And and so how then further funding for the business was built is, well, if if our workforce is students, I mean, on the one side, you'd be maybe selling a website for 15, 20,000 rand a pop, but your cost is about 2,000 rand or so. You know, so each side you sell, you know, it funds the business further. You know, so, so that's how, that's how, you know, it, it started becoming more safe. Okay, so that would have been, I mean, the, the end of the story and the big, the, the big lesson there besides playing on the stock exchange would be, and if you can't, if, you, if you're not a businessman, at least look like a businessman. I mean, that, that's why you invested in your clothing. So that's a big takeout for me, right? But, uh, <laughs> so, but, 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 but let's then, then move on to, I mean, that should have been the end of the story. You, you have this IT web design portfolio business and it just moves on and gets bigger, hopefully. But that's not what happened. At some stage... The, the transition to, to Avatar comes up. So, so tell us what happened there because Value has been seated next to you with his Amazulu top. is rather quiet. So uh, who wants to pick up? Value, you or, or, or Zibu in terms of what happened next? Perhaps you, you should do so, Value. Yeah. You tell them. You can, you can okay. carry okay. on. Yeah. All right. Cool. Cool. So, so then the journey, you know, like with, with Sisonke, you know, we, we came together with a company called Crazy Boys and, and we did a deal. You know, for the first time, that converted us from a web development business into a digital business, uh, a digital agency. You know, and um, and that's the first time we had Cape Town offices. You know, through this one deal with Crazy Boys, and me and Veli actually met. Is maybe you can take it from yeah. there? Yeah, 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 yeah. I was getting used to just being the model accessory next to me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so so so, so it, it it was very interesting. Um, so so my my history is a bit uh, different. I studied law at uh, uh, UCT, uh, economics and politics as well. But I always wanted to be a creative. Um, and then um, I was already uh, involved in a few businesses. And one of the businesses that I was involved in was a nightclub. I owned a nightclub, uh, Pata Pata Lounge in Cape Town. But what that did is that it gave me a lot of free time during the day. And I only really worked on weekend. From Monday to like Thursday, I was kind of in my, in my flat. Um, and I was very responsible for marketing uh, the um, the brand and and really um uh, doing that that side of the business uh, in the clubbing business so i heard of a school called red and yellow when i heard of a school called red and yellow i took up a course just to fill my time and i fell in love with marketing you know uh, i understood deeper what 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 the field was um and after my postgraduate uh, uh, in marketing um met guys uh, philip island uh, uh, john devonport and a guy called Jason Knight uh, and they came in and all my favorite brands I mean they were working on BMW they were working on Apple uh, and they came to recruit uh, students um, and that's when I sold uh, my nightclub and packed up and moved to Joburg so that's how I got into the business so um, but I'd had previous businesses that were successful that I'd sold um, and I was nominated for this one tourism business um, uh, that I had called uh, Kentani Africa, um, which was a very novel idea, which is almost uh, a 
Airbnb based, so you could book into a cultural home, so you could book into a Sesotho home, you could book into a Zulu home, and you'd almost live like the family would live, you know. So there was quite a novel idea at the time that got me nominated for Black Business Quarterly Awards, all right? Um, yeah, yeah, we're nominated for that award. I think it was Young uh, Leader or something. Yeah. And Z happened to be the speaker uh, function. Yeah. Uh, a speech. Now, coming from the clubbing world and coming from, um, I mean, I started business at about 14, 15. So I'd only known business as a certain uh, uh, narrative, right? Um, what particularly interested me about Z's speech, and I'm I mean, I'd, heard, I'd seen uh, business people speak, but I'd never heard anyone uh, uh, speak and, and, and align with religion, right? Uh, I think it's about the story of David, uh, if, if I remember. It's a long time ago now, but it was a very religious-based uh, uh, um, speech. And I found that quite interesting because I'd never seen a business leader that talks about spirituality, and it's it's something that interests me. So um, I, I didn't win the award. Uh, I was cheated. Um, so so afterwards, as as consolation, I I, I talked to um, I was talking to the editor, and, I, and they were like all the the rejection speech of oh you are so close, great business, you, know, you can still go on. Um, and I said, you know, I was really um, uh, happy about uh, uh, your keynote speaker. And um, the lady, uh, Smulele, said, okay, cool. All right. And I walked up to the table and we, 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 we chatted. Um, uh, I think we, we swapped numbers. Um, and then we kind of carried on with our lives. You know, I was on a growth part at Island Devonport, um, working on the BMW account. Um, uh, and we, I think we're just launching M3. Um, and then we started talking more and more with Z, you know. Um, I think it was SMS at the time. It wasn't, it wasn't WhatsApp. So we're SMSing, chatting. And then there was a position at uh, Crazy Boys. Um, uh, I think it was for uh, sales and marketing director. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Business development. Yeah, yeah. And so, so I thought he had a bag of energy. Yeah. And he'd be grateful. <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah, Z says oh, come through. Now, Crazy Boys was smaller. Island Devonport at the time was one of the uh, uh, fastest growing agencies. Um, and I remember just thinking about it, and it it it. I always say it wasn't a decision of the mind because the mind would have said, okay, you're doing very very well here. You're growing. Um, and I decided to to to, to join uh, a Z at, at at Crazy Boys, which I had family meetings, I had people, friends. Um, and my partner at the time was like, "Why are you throwing your life away? I mean, you're leaving working at BMW to go to Crazy Boys. What, what is the meaning of this?" No, 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 no. <laughs> Career suicide. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I had top people at WPP phone me up saying, this is career suicide. <laughs> this is the the worst thing. I I'd, I'd, I'd mentor saying, this doesn't make sense. You know, this company, Crazy Boys, we don't know of. Why would you join um, uh, 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 this guy? Uh, I remember even some of my closest people saying, you know, this guy is even from the same age, is from Fosloras. You know, stay, stay with the wife. <laughs> <laughs> so, so here's the thing. I mean, they, they gave you every, you know, logical reason why why you should not be crazy enough to join Crazy Boys, but you did. So, so what was the one reason that that tipped the scales and that meant that you actually went ahead anyway, uh, Veli? It it I can't describe it. It was it was more spiritual. It 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 was something felt right. It was more a feeling than it was. Um, I remember I was, when I moved down, I think my salary was cut by like 40, 50%. Yeah. So 
I, I was earning half of what I would have earned. Um, and the guys at uh, Island Devonport wanted me to stay so much. They offered me a little percentage to stay. They wanted to basically uh, say, what do you want? You know, they called me to the office. They said, what do you want? Do you want more money? I was like, no, I don't want more money. I just want to go to Crazy Boys. They were like, you know, aren't you happy? I was like, no, I'm happy, but I, this is what I feel I need to do. Um, and then I did it. It, it, it. it was really, really, really crazy. And, and I don't, don't regret it for one day, but it didn't make sense to a lot of people because I couldn't even articulate it. You know, when we were talking synergy about the future that I couldn't even explain. So, um, and, and, and that's that's really where it started. I mean, uh, uh, I was one of the youngest directors at, at a WPP because at the end they were saying, okay, cool, you've made your mind, you go, but at least sit, sit as a non-executive island Devonport board because I wanted to leave so desperately. So uh, I, I, I can't describe it. It was something Im uh, spiritual and emotional rather than cognitive. I mean, I cut my salary by... 50 yeah, I got that. Okay, so so let's fast forward from, from, uh, from uh, well, Island Devonport to Crazy Boys, where you guys are now together, uh, and then then move on to 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 the formation of Avatar. So, yeah. so without spending too much time with Crazy Boys, maybe Zibu, you tell us, how long were, they, were you guys together there and then... How long thereafter did, uh, did, did, did Avatar start yeah. and what happened next? Yeah, so, you know, Veli came at a very interesting time because at, at that time, um, I, I became a young global leader and which exposed me to, like, you know, some pretty hectic institutions around the world, Ivy League universities. And in going to different countries and seeing the future, you know, I was thinking to myself, why are we building an agency around a channel, right? Why are we, why are we building a, an agency around digital? Why is there no radio agency or TV agency? Surely this is not a sustainable model, right? And, and with the research that I was doing, then came the vision to build an integrated agency. So this was way back in 2011. You know, and, um, you know, we spoke with our partners, you know, but, you know, our visions were different, you know. And now knowing Veli at that time, because he sat right across from me. I mean, Crazy Boys was a little tiny office in Joburg. Our big engine room was in Cape Town. And uh, he sat right across, you know, from me. And every day I think to myself, this is the smartest person I know, right? Honestly, you know, I still hold that opinion. Till this day, he is the smartest person I know. And one yes, of the yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but 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 Veli, I mean, your your uncle's school professor in Gubani, so so I mean, it makes complete sense. Anyway, so yeah. <laughs> All right, so he's the smartest guy in the he's the smartest guy in the room, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, so you know, it just made logical sense, you know. And one day, I just said, V, I've got this vision. I want to do this. And you know what he did? He sold his house. Right, he sold his house in Richards Bay, and he said, "I want to be part of it." You know, that's how, you know, we we survived the first few days. Spoke to my partners. My partners basically said, "Okay, God, okay, Z, you built the Joburg office to where it is." You know, uh, we grew it tremendously. You know, the crazy boys Joburg office, and they said, "Look, take the clients along with you." You know, we'll keep the Cape Town clients. So that's what became Avatar, you know. So we reapproached all our clients, repitched as Avatar with Veli, and that's how we started. But okay, let me just get clarity. So did did Crazy Boys itself merge into Avatar, or is it a separate company and and something else happened to Crazy Boys? I mean, I know the two of you guys were involved there. What happened there, Veli? Uh, 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 did we just confirm that? So 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 Crazy Boys. So if I left, the thing is the relationships with the clients were sitting with me in, because I won a lot of those clients, right? So we came to an understanding that they, are, they can't carry on with those clients if I'm not there because they're Joburg-based and my partners are Cape Town-based. So if I leave, basically those clients go belly up, right? So the deal was then, okay, we will carry on with those clients as avatar but then we will continue to outsource work as Avatar back to Crazy Boys, right? So 
So that's what brought in Business Connection. As a, and interestingly enough, we won them back. They're one of our biggest clients in our business, but they're one of our first clients. You know, that's how we got Fox International Channels, National Geographic. And these were our first clients, your top TVs, Converse, et cetera, et cetera. That's how we started. So our base, when we started, started already from a established place because we were just repitching okay and that makes that clients where we that made a difference existing yeah. so so valley let's let's yeah. go back to you i mean so you're 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 studying uh i take it ppe politics philosophy economics based upon what you said or, or, or law right uh you have your nightclub you're you're getting into advertising you're earning good money you want to quit they want to double your give you extra money they won't even make you a director uh you then take a 50 percent cut to to get to crazy boys and then you actually prepare to sell your blooming house like what's the matter with you that this, this act of faith with 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 Zebu specifically, I, I think is 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 incredible, and it doesn't happen in many many business relationships. It, it's true, and and it's a feeling that has been burning um, throughout. I mean, we have some difficult times um, now. We've had some difficult times before, but that north star has always been there. And I mean, trying to explain to people that you've cut your salary. And your main source of rental income, <laughs> you want to sell that as well and reinvest it into the business is, is a crazy thought. But again, um, I, I do think it, it, the, the, the strength of, of believing uh, in the vision of where Avatar is going and where Avatar should go uh, has always been alive. And I mean... Um, we we can we can have a whole segment about both our sacrifices that we've put into this business that the people that are closest to us thought we are making the biggest mistakes of our lives. So it's been just that common uh, belief. Crazy. I mean, nothing makes sense. Uh, you don't sell your house when you cut fifty percent of your income. You know, and and again. I think when people see the Avatar story, we've never really even talked about the sacrifices, and uh, and 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 there's been there's been plenty, yeah. you know, and 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 things that have put us against people we love to say you 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 are you are actually going down the right, the wrong path, but it's that strength and determination and belief and in believing the vision that has kept us and and grown us over. So the years. so very first you, I mean. Just besides the, the, the salary cut in the house, that, that happened a long time ago. Let's say in the last nine years or so, the three biggest sacrifices you had to make as Avatar, what are they? Well, the, the one biggest sacrifice for me is always time, right? Uh, we are so dedicated to um, uh, Avatar uh, that it, it eats away time from our families. It eats away time from we're our friends and so the 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 time that we give to avatar is an undivided attention um, um and 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 it's affected a lot of relationships because you don't have enough time to uh, spend with with family you don't have enough time to spend with your friends and so i think that is being being uh, an entrepreneur is a very difficult thing because you can't leave it, you know, at five o'clock when you get into your car, you can't leave your problems uh, uh, at the office, you, you know. So I think also the concept of your problems, even if when you are present uh, with your wife, you still have the avatar head of it. I think the biggest sacrifice is that we are unable to 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 switch off avatar. So it, I could be on holiday, you know. I, But Avatar is there. So having a wife called Avatar in your relationship that follows you around has been the biggest sacrifice. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, we are, I definitely concur with that, without a doubt. You know, but for me, is you know, I've got this vision and purpose in life where I want to make a positive difference to other people. I mean, part of the story that I didn't mention is when I went broke at 23. Right. Um, so, so we made our first million when I was around 21 years old, 
and at 23 went completely broke, completely, completely broke. And through that process and, and just spiritually and centering myself, you know, in God, um, I, I developed a vision that, you know, the business should, should be about making a positive difference to other people. Now, and, and my life is dedicated towards that. But now what you find is built, we've built so many different things in so many different places with the purpose of, of a positive difference. I mean, we've got computer centers, auditoriums, gardens, you know, um, uh, ECD centers, you name it, youth projects, et cetera, et cetera, that as a business we've invested in over the years. Now, that's what I want to be doing with 100% of my time, right, eventually. And, you know, at times, you know, I want to be doing that, but, but I need to do Avatar, right? So the way I balance it in my head is that Avatar is an enabler for my purpose in life, right? And, and if I need to sacrifice, you know, to make the purpose happen or to make the purpose bigger, I'll make the sacrifice in the years that I'm in Avatar. But ultimately, that's what I want to be okay, doing. Okay, so if you don't have Avatar, you don't have the enabler. So that's why it's important to get Avatar right uh, and, and, then, and then do all the other things yeah. right. Why, why is the company called uh, Avatar Valley? Um, so there's two uh, uh, definitions. And we actually found the second definition that we liked more than the original uh, 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 definition. So the first definition, the founding definition, was an avatar is a representation of self on the on 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 on, on the on the online world. So uh, the 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 way the company was founded is these two worlds, which were the offline and the online. So we founded it when there was still a debate: what is going to kill what? Is TV going to kill uh, uh, digital? Is digital going to kill radio? And we kind of said. Everything needs to integrate. So both worlds need to have synergies. And if you've seen our logo, it's got two circles. And these are the worlds that collide to make for effective uh, communication. So an avatar is a representation of self online and vice versa. So that is the founding principle. Digitally, uh, we launched with digital at the core as, 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 a, as, as, a, as a positioning. And this was merging the two worlds of, 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 of where I came came from, which was traditional, and where Z came from, which was the digital world, and it was these two worlds working together for brands. Um, and, and, and that was the original definition, and we thought it was lovely until we sat uh, 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 across um, uh, uh, table or the boardroom table with uh, uh, a client of Hindu faith, um, and he told us, wow, you guys told a, hin a Hindu be like what 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 is that about? And he's like, no, an avatar is sent uh, by the gods to come and, and create peace, you know. And he, he referenced Avatar, uh, uh, the, the 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 movie, uh, the the Airbender movie that says that person in Avatar is sent to create peace and harmony. Now, because when we started this agency, and it's still something that is very important to us. Uh, to 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 have an egoless um, uh, 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 agency, have an agency of good people that care about each other, and have an agency that is here to create peace. We're not here to pick fights. Uh, we don't want people to be called competitors because, I mean, as much as we are in competition for the same business, doesn't mean now when I meet you in a mall, I mustn't say hi to you and have that child-like uh, uh, school rivalry. No, we're all in the same industry. So we started liking that definition that to create peace and harmony for the growth of the industry. And that's uh, so, so, so yeah, there's two definitions. We, we like the latter now, um, but the founding one was, was one where, where it was for the merging of the two worlds. But we like Avatar as, 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 as an instrument of harmony and peace in the industry. Okay, well, maybe it's a merging of three worlds. Those two worlds initially that we know about and then the, the spiritual world that, that you've alluded to so often and that comes through in terms of, that, uh, of your client definition. Do, do you have something to add on to that, uh, Zibu, from your side? On, in terms of the name and what do you mean? Uh, no. uh, very, very, very said everything. 
doesn't doesn't name matter in in a business oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah i mean i mean our focus as as a business is always around the name right um that's the one thing that we protect more than anything else i mean if you look at the recent deal that we did in durban right what immediately changes that business you know from you know agency i mean the wonderful agency 19 years lots of great clients fmcg experience but for them what they really wanted was the name you know it, it's what the name means it's what the name actually stands for you know and it's it's the name brings about change right and and so we are aware of that you know we are aware about about the name avatar and that's why you know we we protect it with our utmost you know because that is in essence our equity each time we do great work you know the name is the one that's done great work you know each time you know we do not so great work it's the name that is affected by the not so great work so it means that internally you know we have to have the right systems to protect the name we have to have the right culture to protect that name in in particular um that is mm, fascinating T- tell me Veli, let me bring you in tell me about this uh, this latest acquisition in in uh, in durban and therefore now having a durban branch uh, uh, what, what does it say about avatar Um, well, the thinking, so it's interesting, uh, how that whole conversation started. The conversation started about early this year. Um, we started talking about potentially doing something, et cetera, et cetera. You know, we've been feeling each other out with the Expresso founders as well as ourselves. But what was very striking, you know, between, between, you know, the both of us as, as, as businesses is is how much we have in common you know in terms of our thinking and our beliefs you know there was a lot of uh, there was a lot in common but what really sped up the deal was actually the lockdown right because um we already had a different presence that's how we service unilever as an example we already had that but but what the guys basically said was hey you know, you could grow faster in Durban with us, right? Yes, you've already got Unilever, but hey, we've got Premier, we've got Toys R Us, you know, uh, yeah. they've got Nivea, Bayersdorf, Universal, New Metro, et cetera, et cetera, in a Durban operation, and we thought, um, from a growth perspective. But what made also a lot of sense was the stats were indicating that food brands, you know, in this crisis are the ones that are actually spending more money. And by bringing together a group, because now advertise no longer just an integrated business, we've got lots of business. There's still eminent brands, which has other groups within it, you know, so there's lots and lots of businesses. And we thought, um, if we plug in you know, all these other services that we have as a group into a very category. So they are already servicing below the line, shop marketing, et cetera, et cetera. But we can come in with core strike skills. We can come in with PR, media, digital, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, that we could plug in because they, they, a lot of their brands are food. And those are the ones that are most in need of help at the moment. They could grow really fast. So can the group, because ultimately, Ashraf, you know, where we are now, honest, it's, it's protecting jobs. The last thing I want to do is to retrench. That is the last thing. Yeah, it's, I think, I think yeah. that's a good point. Yeah. I want to do. You know, my, mm. well, really from your side, I mean, we, we, you have a sense of, of uh, Zibu's purpose. I mean, what, what's, what's your purpose in life? We share similar uh, uh, values with Z, and I think that's over eight years as, as business partner, business partners. Um, uh, growth and purpose of people is is very important to me. Um, uh, some of the projects that I'm involved in uh, in the community, and some of the board positions I sit as uh, uh, advisory chair of Red and Yellow, um, and I've been involved with Red and Yellow 
just really grow, you know, because when we're born, uh, we kind of don't know. We don't get a manual where we need to go, you know. Now, the magic moment in someone's life, whether you want to be a doctor, whether you want to be a lawyer, uh, whether you want to be an athlete, once your talents are, are, are um, align with your purpose, that's the magic moment for me. Um, uh, the minute I knew I didn't want to be a lawyer and I wanted to go into creativity, that's where my life actually started. And I think a lot of people throughout their lives are lost because they don't have any guidance to say, okay, you are good at this and you love this, so therefore you must go into this. So for me, um, and that's why I love uh, every time there's a new person or, or, or we employ more people, it really, it makes me really happy. Every, every time I see someone's growth, uh, someone enter the agency maybe as a junior and then get promoted to be uh, in a senior leadership role, I love that growth uh, 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 a story of people. And that's really why, why I wake up. I wake up to make sure that um, I can um, uh, uh, expand people's purpose through my experiences and try to uh, um, make sure that those people that I, I, I interact with um, um, uh, grow, you know, especially in the okay. What then is your, I mean, we know your purpose, Belly. What, what, what's your talent? If you put, if you give me a, a one line answer of like, my talent is this. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you want to answer that. Uh, yeah. right. See? I want to share a story Go before ahead. you okay. ask that. Okay. Right. So, for him to become the CCO, he actually didn't want to become the CCO. I literally had to almost like blackmail him into becoming the CEO before he answered that. All right, go ahead, yeah. So, so my talent is uh, observation. Um, I, I'm an observer of behavior. I'm an observer of situations and people. And I package a reaction, which in this form is creativity. Uh, but I find myself, I'm very particular uh, with how, I mean, Z, Z, Z laughs at me sometimes. When I read an email, I'm not reading what the email is saying. I'm reading the intention behind those words. I, I, I sometimes ask Z, am I getting paranoid here? The email is saying one thing, but the intention of the email is this. So, uh, I, I, I'm an only child, so I think I developed a, um, a talent of observing people. Uh, uh, I used to observe visitors. Um, uh, so, so I think my, my greatest talent is, 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 is observation, and in this case, packaging my observation to come up with an advertising or a communication solution. Okay, wow, the observer got that. Uh, you know, I'm going to ask you the same question, uh, Zibo, about yourself, your, your great talent besides blackmailing people. Okay, ju just just hold again. Oh, are we freezing once again? Sorry, just give me one minute. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Just while you're laughing, we just we just uh, uh, we're just swapping something around you quickly. Sorry. All right. <laughs> just just you can pause for a minute or two, right? Sorry. Why? Okay. Um, but okay, okay, we haven't we haven't stopped recording, so can I just continue, right? Okay, that's fine. All right, so. Um, let, let, yeah, I'm just going to ask that question again about uh, about you. Uh, although it's a pity for me to ask it again, it's such a nice question. But I mean, you got the gist of it, right? So we'll edit it out on our side, right? Okay. Uh, yeah. Are we okay to go? Okay. Right. Five, four, three, two. So I'm going to ask it about mellow, but I, the first way I asked it is better, and that's the one we're going to use. Okay, Ben, just remember that. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, Z, tell me about yeah. What, what's your talent? Um. Well, I've been told uh, that that the, the one thing that I do very well is bringing to being what is not there, right? So 
seeing, having an idea and making an idea happen and seeing an idea to, to the, um, you know, I've, I've, you know, it's, I've done it in the context of business. Um, I've done it in the, in, in the, in the context of work, you know, and, and once I have an idea, I'm, I'm like almost obsessive around, around an idea. Because I'm a highly competitive person in nature, like super, super competitive. It's very important that once an idea, you know, you know, comes, it actually becomes something. So I will be a knight, you know, until it comes to fruition. Mm. And I, th I think I do that very well. Okay, what, what has inspired you to be super competitive? I mean, is there a moment uh, or, or is it a culture in your family home or, or what? Okay. Um, you know, I, I guess it must come from my upbringing. I wasn't a big kid. Was, I, you know, like when you're forced to do athletics, I was always the last kid at the back. Um, you know, never into sports. So I've got no idea what sportsmanship is in a way. It's nothing that was built into me. And, and when I had a taste of of, of uh, business in particular, something that I was very good in, right? Um, and as a result of discovering that I'm very good in it, I, I think that's when I developed, you know, a competitive nature that you'd have on a sports field. But my competitive nature is a little bit different, you know. Um, um, and, you know, my sportsmanship is in the context of, of business and making ideas happen. I, I, I think it's it's... It's being a late bloomer in life because I was I was the kid who was constantly in the library. You know, um, during breaks I was the kid who was in the computer center learning how to break the thing apart and put it together again. You know, so socially I was like nowhere. You know, up until very uh, very late stage in my twenties. You know, and that's all of that. Then all of that started, but it starts in. In now this idea, you know, around mm. the business. Okay, fascinating. If you, if you yeah, watch, Valley? If you watch the documentary about Michael Jordan on Netflix, mm. Z is the biggest version of that without being a douchebag. You know, <laughs> and he, he wants to win, he wants to beat people to be better. Uh, and, and, and the thing is, what I've learned about Z, he's always willing and he's got the knowledge of everything in, in the business. I mean, I see him talk to my CFO. I'm like, how do you even know all of those things? You know, so he's also willing to do everything that he asks of us. Yeah, well, wow, that, that is so fascinating. That, how do you guys then, I mean, complement each other as, as, as players in, 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 in Avatar? Very, very go first, you. Uh, we are very different. Um, uh, we are very different. And I think we respect our differences that's um, our strength. and i think that's our strength you know we we really i hear the talk to the cfo i i'm fascinated because it's like wow you know and sometimes when i'm presenting creative he's like wow that was great so i think i, I think we don't try to be like each other because we are totally different but i, I think we appreciate together we 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 complement each other to be better because what Z is not, uh, I can complement, and what I am not. People are looking for business partners. They look at people that I mean, we we joke around at interviews. People are like, "Oh, you guys are you know you, you guys are friends," and we the first thing we say, we are not friends. <laughs> <laughs> and, and 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 people are like, "You're not friends." We're like, "No, we 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 are even beyond." that you know and 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 for me it's in re it's in the reasons that the partnership has strength you know yeah i think that's so important to uh, see i'm sure you want to add to this yeah, yeah. i mean uh really really said a mouthful um and i remember when having the conversation with really around avatar it's because 
that's the thing, you know. And and in because of my introverted nature, I can't sell work as well as Vedli can sell work, you know. So that's why I have to respect his skill. I have to respect his craft. Vedli is more creative than me, right? And that's why I have to respect his skill and craft, right? And when we discuss business, he comes from a creative perspective. I come from a very technical perspective. But here's the interesting thing. We've never had an argument. Like, we've had a difference of opinion, and we have differences of opinion all the time. But in our eight years together, we've never had an argument. The only argument we know of is the one where we are told that we are fighting. (laughs) (laughs) That we business is breaking up. (laughs) Because they don't understand how been together for eight years. And again, it's in that respect, you know, because sometimes I will disagree with the direction and Z will, do, will, 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 will talk about it, but in a respectable manner. Yeah. And again, it's not about us. It's not about, you know, our personal. It's all about what is in the interest of the business, That's you it. know. And and it's like almost raising an eight-year-old child together where we're like, okay, cool. This is what is the best route. And, and another thing, we also not set on not changing opinion. I come back and I say, you know what, Z, you are right. And Z comes back and says, you know, V, you are right, uh, 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 and 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 that that relationship of being able to look at it and say, "Ooh, okay, this makes sense," you know, and 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 because we're not very ego driven, um, we we can accept when we are wrong, we can accept when, but it's all about the business, and everything we do is about avatar, and I, and I think that's it, yeah. And I think I think the key magic feature, part of it, is. You know, when we look at work in the business, you, just like any other agents, you know, we've got a brilliant strategist by the name of Zamo, you know, and his team, they'll come up with strat, right? And the position that I sit with, right, and, and our our digital strategist, our, our chief digital officer, you know, Dr. Ievo Klute, will come up with his bit, right? So... My job is to look at what Bailey is saying, what digital is saying, what strategy is saying, right? And are all three making sense? Is it all connecting with one another? So it means that I have to be knowledgeable about what everyone is doing in essence, right? So at times, I'll have an opinion on creative as an example. Now, when so in any other agency, when a CEO has an opinion about creative, you get small. You know, like you don't like you know nothing about creative, but because of our culture, right? Opinion about digital. I will have an opinion about strategy because the way we think about it. I come in very late in the world because I'm the I'm the mock client, so I mimic the CEO of whoever that client is, and I start criticizing and bashing everything down. But the reason why I do that, right, is because that's how we get the work to such a relevant, a relevant state where you don't have the same people that worked on the work critiquing the work, mm. right? So I come with a fresh eye from everyone else. And we have to have that mutual respect, you know, with our team, but primarily between me and various yeah. partners. Because if we've got that, our team, Follows, that's well, I, mean, I think you know you, you've summed it up. An internal auditor, I and mean, that's where you come in to say, if our bottom line is that we want to grow our strength as a as avatar, then then we have to be deliberate uh, in critiquing ourselves. Otherwise, we'll be just nice guys, and, and you stop. Well, goodness, we can talk about government uh, in, in South Africa. Sadly, in, in in that light, right? It does get me to think about. I mean, is is it really? Is it the same two guys that that? started the business, still involved in the business as owners, or has that expanded? We are obsessively involved in the business, but not to a point of disempowering the people that run the work. So our respectful manner, as, as, as we're saying, we've got a PhD in, in digital and social media. Now, he's a doctor. I have to respect that he knows what he's doing. But for me, it 
we are the monitor the culture. We are very to monitor that what, what we sold to them as an agency we still have. Now, that has been um, a very key part mm-hmm. to our growth, uh, the owner uh, management. And because we are entrepreneurs, I question CEs and cost to client on their behalf. So be- before you send a cost to client, I have to look at the value. I have to try to squeeze the suppliers. I reject the CE and I'm like, no, tell the guys they, they, must, they, must, they must do better. So by the time it gets, it's already gone through that entrepreneurial filter of saying, no, uh, we've done uh, so much work. I'm, I'm the one that's phoning up studios and I'm like, give me a recording free radio station. We've given you 100 ads this year. So for me, because we are entrepreneurs and we are close to the business, our clients benefit from our entrepreneurial auditing. Uh, and that is something that has worked over the years. So we, 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 we also don't have, we don't play golf and we, we don't own wine farms. So, so, so this, is, this, this is literally what, what we do for fun as well. <laughs> now, I, now I know, I, I certainly get that, yeah. But I mean, perhaps, I mean, I'd like to pick your brain on this. I mean, you know that the... The, the, the champion South Africa movement that I founded or co-founded uh, has a dream to become a, a champion nation. Um, but the key phrase that we use, uh, and uh, Zia, I'll start with you here, champion people, bold champion nations. H- how do you understand that phrase, champion people, bold champion nations, and, and, and implement that not just to Avatar, but, but to the entire country? You know, the best pieces of advice I've, I've ever gotten is that people are as good as you are as a person, right? So as a leader, um, you are, that's, how, that's what your people are going to, be, uh, going to be like. So if you've got a champion attitude, you will build a champion business, right? And, you know, there's, there are very simple principles, like if or you're working for someone else, you know, what you do, you know, for the person that you are working for, you know, the way you treat them, the way you behave your business. One day, when you go into your own business, your people are going to do the same thing to you. And that's why I say that for me, when you start talking about, you know, you know, champions, building a champion country, it starts with self. You know, at the end of the day, you know, when the people, you know, and, and, and by so saying, you influence it in a very humble way. You know, when you in a room, right, you should, it, it's almost like your, your work should speak for itself before you announce that this is who I am, this is what I've done, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You shouldn't have to do that. You know, and and because you're a you are an example you're an exemplary leader. Now, now I think it's a it's a great aspiration point because that's when you infect people with a champion attitude and therefore yeah. Okay, fascinating. I'm sure you wanna to add to that as well, uh Valley. Um yeah, I, I think I think so much reference of champions throughout the times, and you'll find that their resilience, their hard work beyond their talent, is what uh, 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 made them champions. You look at a champion; there's certain thread, sportsmen uh, uh, and sportswomen. You know, um, uh, you look at artists uh, that have really perfected their craft. It wasn't just the talent. And I find that a lot of the people that I meet that are met, uh, some big musicians uh, because they are constantly wanting to do better. You know, now we've got a slogan um, in, 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 in the agency that uh, we are only the biggest fully black owned uh, agency that there's Africa and there's a world. Right, so we are never satisfied because champions always have the desire to be better, and that's why, even in the media, we block off the noise. I mean, a lot of people say a lot of great things, and thank you for the people that say that about Avatar. 
But always when someone says, you guys are doing great, my, my immediate thought is, but we could be doing better. But we are not in Kenya. But we are not in uh, Lagos. But we are in New York. We're not in Shanghai. So for me, a champion should always never be satisfied with any achievement and also perfect their skills to always progress because champions progress nations. So, uh, and I find a lot of people get to a point where they're like, okay, I've made it, whatever that means. Uh, uh, but, but, but ultimately, that quest for perfection, and you must be agitated to become better. And, and I think that for me, what, what makes a champion. I mean, I saw a video of a training with uh, Serena Williams. It was the most fascinating thing to watch. I mean, this person is already a champion, but they train harder than the people that are not champions. No, I, I, I think it's a very, very good point. Which, which then, I mean, goodness, we could chat for another two hours. I'm not going to do that today. And we've spoken a little about about the actual business, right? But, but I will say this. I mean, so at the time that that avatar started, the fact that you had to uh, sell your your house, I mean, at a guess, what is it? You probably need to, uh, one or two million rands of startup capital. Uh, maybe you put in some money as well uh, uh, from from your side, um, Zebu Two. How, what's the business worth now? What, what's what's Avatar worth uh, now, Z? Yeah. <laughs> so it's priceless. <laughs> you see that that's an emotional that's an emotional answer, but I want the auditing answer. So. <laughs> I, I wish I had one, Ashraf. I've never tried to sell. You know, if I was selling, I'd have an answer for you. <laughs> you know, but it's it's growing. Um, it's it's growing. We are indeed truly lucky to have, you know, the great clients that we have, you know, with the great people that we have, you know, the various businesses that we are involved in, in, in different things. We are, we are indeed truly lucky to be in such a fortunate position. In maybe, such maybe, a maybe, time maybe I'll rephrase in, in that. Country. Not so much what does it mean in money exactly. terms or, or priceless, but let's say when you started, maybe you were you were number 100 uh, on, on the list of, of uh, advertising or marketing agencies. Where, where do you see yourself now, uh, Z? Uh, well, I think we're we the largest fully black-owned agency group. You know, um, which is which is okay, but you know, to Veli's point, not where we we really do. there are there are a few transactions that are still coming. You know, in this year still, yeah, we are working on more things. What the one we just did is not the last one. Uh, there's a few more that are coming, um, and but for us, you know, it's 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 to be constantly creating meaningful work and providing change to our country, you know, for the better, you know, and if we are doing that, we are a champion. Okay. Well, really some of the clients you work with now, who are they? So, 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 um, the biggest, uh, clients and, and we've got lots of, 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 um, clients that we've had for a very long time. Um, so we've got SARS um, as, as a client. We've just done your Tax Matters uh, uh, campaign, which is something we're very proud uh, of, something that we shot at during lockdown. Uh, we are in Unilever. Um, it's a great opportunity uh, to grow because if, if, if people know about Unilever, it's the marketing institution. So to be able to work with Unilever is, is, is really, really special and it's something of a big box in any career of any marketer or advertiser. Uh, we've got Caltex uh, as a client. Uh, we've got the Telcom Group uh, and, and BCX um, uh, as, as a client. Um, I, 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 I forget, uh, and, and this is the most difficult question, we've got Nokia uh, as, as, a, as a client. And, and Nokia is very interesting because they're really coming back uh, quite uh, aggressively uh, into the market. I think Working on Aromat and Norrots is also another dream of any creative. So we work on the Aromat and Norrots work as well. Well, we've just won something big, the insurance industry. But we will announce that yeah. in due time. But insurance industry, something very significant for the age. Okay, we're going we're we're to look out for that. Is, is there a brand, uh, here's a pitch for you, uh, Z. Is there a brand you, you'd absolutely love to work with, but you don't? 
BMW. <laughs> Your partner did, but but he dumped uh, BMW for for other things. Bring it, bring uh, it along. Yeah, maybe it that's the reason why you wanted me on. <laughs> well, well, well. I came with my top limit. <laughs> well, listen, I think the no, I, and and um, I mean, Ashra, particularly why is because as a kid. My dream job was actually to design cars for BMW. So the passion point is very, very deep. And and my mom tells me that one of the first words that I could pronounce was Bavaria, <laughs> which is what the B stands for in BMW. Uh, you know, so those were one of my first words. So that's my. That's well, well, there you are. Well, I'll tell you what, I mean, it, it's, it's been great chatting to, to both of you. I'm just going to leave you. I mean, you've said there's been so much wisdom already, but uh, I, w- I want to ask both of you in, in, in closing to, to share maybe one line of, of advice to, to the people watching this and listening on, on podcasts as well. Um, in terms of the one advice when, they, when they're starting a business and to, and to really not, not to survive, to, to endure, to thrive. What's the one, one advice you, you would give them? Uh, Veli, let me, let me start with you. Uh, uh, be authentic. Um, um, I usually caution, especially the young people, having role models in business and in life that they model themselves against because then you are modeling yourself to be my, a, 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 a different person to what you are. So I think knowing your skills, knowing yourself, knowing your true self, and and actually uh, using it as a competitive advantage, and not be a me too. Not try to be like an entrepreneur that you admire. It's always good to admire entrepreneurs. It's always good to have entrepreneurs and people that you look up to. But I always caution not to try to be them. You know, I think everyone is unique and is in polishing your strengths in a way that gives you an advantage because there's only one of you. And if you are your true authentic self and you understand your weaknesses and you understand your strengths, you can be better valued to what what what, what you're contributing in uh, and follow your passion. Follow what you love. I, I could have been a lawyer. I, I'm, I'm trained to be a lawyer. I didn't like it. I might have made an average lawyer. But I know I wouldn't have made the best lawyer because I'm passionate about creativity. I'm passionate about the industry. And this is why what makes me better. And I, I offer myself. I, I don't try to be the next person. I know my strengths. I know my weaknesses. And I offer myself. So authenticity, I think. Is okay, be, be authentic. Yeah. Uh, Zibu? Um, so it's interesting, Ashraf, that I, I actually tweeted something like this this week, you know, um, a a few years ago, I visited a school in the Free State, a very very humbling experience, where um, where it's in the middle of of uh, um, of I think it was Buchabelo, if I'm not mistaken, um, and it's got a, a motto called Pihelo Esrola Matata, and what that translates to is with perseverance you can defeat any problem in this world, right? And and since visiting that school and seeing all those children coming together, you know, building, you know, they come from very poor backgrounds, you know, but the school had produced amazing people in society. And, and I linked it back to that one purpose of the school in that with perseverance, you know, we are capable of anything, you know, and if, there was one thing I live by, and I would, I would like to share with anyone that is listening or watching, rather, is, you know, persevere. Hang in there and don't give up. You know, with perseverance, never truly know how close you are until you persevere more and more and more and more. Okay, good. I thought you were going to say more 10 times, because that would be perseverance, because that makes absolute sense to me. Uh, <laughs> but listen, great chatting to, to both of you. Some, some incredibly important uh, insights. And, and, I, and I pray uh, that, that uh, Avatar, for yourselves, uh, your families, and for our country, uh, continues uh, you know, being the champion agency uh, that, you, that you certainly are. And I've made the point as well that uh, when we talk about... Um, uh, people, we don't talk about the, the A to Z, but I've noticed that uh, uh, Veli has been called V and, and Zibu has been called 
<laughs> Z or Z. So it's a case of uh, not so much uh, A to Z, but uh, but but V to Z. They have this this way of rewriting things anyway. So great chatting to you guys. Thanks thanks so much. <laughs>